Hey, welcome back to Zombie Tactics. Today, another installment in the Gun Fu series. Of course, in the Gun Fu series, I often do reviews of firearms training classes, and that's what we're doing today. This is my friend Brandon Schell. I met Brandon a couple years ago uh, while we were both students in another company's firearms class, and Brandon operates a company called NorCal MedTech. And through that company, I took a class called Defensive Medicine 101 later on. Brandon's exactly the kind of guy that you want to take a tactical medicine or defensive medicine class from because he's a full-time paramedic operating in a high-incident area of California where, let's just be frank about it, he's likely to put those skills into use on a regular basis. And because of that, you're getting kind of a fresh perspective from somebody uh, using that information in the field daily. Now, in addition to that, Brandon's company, NorCal MedTac, also kind of handles the opposite end of the equation, which is defending yourself from attack so that maybe you're not the person who has to be patched up by the paramedic. Now to that end, they teach a number of firearms classes. They teach some basic NRA classes. They teach some pistol, rifle, shotgun classes at various levels. And on this day, I was uh, taking Defensive Pistol 101, taught by Brandon and a couple of assistant instructors who were uh, also very good instructors, I should say, by the way. Uh, now. This class, how do I characterize it? It's a one-day class, but it kind of ramps up fairly quickly. Uh, the material covered in this class might take some other um, companies, gosh, up to four days to go over. And for that reason, it's kind of a compressed learning opportunity, and that might be perfect for certain kinds of people. The kind of person that I wouldn't recommend it to you is somebody who just bought a gun and they have no idea what to do with it. That might not be the best place to go take a class initially if that's where you are. You might not want to take this defensive pistol one on 101 class. You might want to take a basic NRA class, which DoorCal MedTech also teaches. You might want to take a CCW class or at least get in a fair amount of range time, maybe along with a friend, somebody who can show you at least the basics of how to load the gun, how to make it safe, stuff like that. Those things are covered in this class. But really, you'd be better off if you kind of knew just a teensy bit about how your gun operated before you took this class. This class is a great follow-on to something like getting your CCW certificate or license in California. And we very quickly go through all of the basics of how to operate a firearm, a handgun specifically, a pistol, in a defensive situation. Of course, we go over things like the proper you know, upper body structure alignment and sight picture and proper grip and how to draw the gun correctly and where to reload it and how to reload it and weapons malfunction clearances and all that kind of good stuff. Pretty quickly, and I was surprised, frankly, at how quickly the other students that I was with in this class picked up on that material. I would have thought that they would have had a much more of a hard time with it than they did, particularly since some of them seemed to be some fairly beginning level shooters. I make that estimation based upon the speed that they were doing these things. Uh, that's kind of an interesting point, by the way, is that it didn't seem to be a problem that there were varying levels of shooters in this class. Uh, there were some competition shooters in the class. There were also some people who really didn't have that much experience with firearms. Maybe they just kind of, like the person that I described, they got the gun, they knew a little bit how to operate it, enough that this was an appropriate class to be taking. Brandon and his assistants did a good job of making sure that everyone got enough individual attention so that that kind of thing wasn't an issue. The slower shooters, the less experienced ones, were able to get good instruction, and those who were a little bit more experienced were not. Um, they didn't feel like they were held back, I guess is what I was saying. Um, and that's partly because we go through a lot of material in this class. The first part of the day was all of those basic shooting skills, putting it all together. The second part of the day was putting that all together and putting it to some kind of use. So we went into exercises that involved some combination of shooting and moving, moving and shooting, shooting then moving, <laughs> take your pick. Work behind barricades and the use of cover, or the use of cover appropriately I should say. And then interestingly enough we went on to do something that I haven't seen in many firearms classes and, and really not you, mostly small companies that, that do this kind of thing, but the use of 3D mannequin-like targets that are designed so that you can have a much more realistic three-dimensional uh, idea about what's going on when you shoot in that kind of a situation, a more real-life situation where it's not just a flat target. That changes up things tremendously, and we were able to do a number of exercises involving placing those 3D mannequins in various places 
with clothing on, while the shooter is facing away and they're setting it up, they don't know what's being set up, and then they're given a set of instructions like, um, Mr. T is the bad guy. And you go, Mr. T, you know, you're turning around, you, you go, what are you going to do? You're going to turn around and see some guy with, with chains on saying, I pity the fool? No, you turn around and you kind of, you have to assess the situation. It's not a simple case of a, a brown or a white piece of cardboard or whether or not it's got, you know, some special L-shaped symbol that's supposed to be a gun or a couple of hands on it that's supposed to mean, I'm, I'm you know, don't shoot me. No, you've really got it. There's clothing on these things and hats and glasses and standing behind objects and around each other. And you have to evaluate the fact that like, oh, 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 one of them's got a T on his T-shirt. That means he's the bad guy. That's the one you're supposed to shoot. Shoot. Hmm, that's some pretty good work at getting the principle of real world target identification kind of working in your head. The idea that it might be an ambiguous situation, it might be something that you have to do a little bit of on the spot analysis about and some quick thinking before that gun comes out of the holster, which was one of the rules. You couldn't get the gun out of the holster till you had identified the threat. It was also really good because it, it brought to bear how much. And, and I think some of the video will be interesting in this, how much when you're shooting in a 3D environment like that, things change radically from what your picture might be with a two-dimensional paper target. All of a sudden, the idea of what is center of mass is a very different idea. What's a valid shot or a good shot and what's not a good shot that you might take for the sake of safety of innocence becomes a very different idea. And we all, to some extent, got a, got a chance to say, hmm, this really needs to affect our thinking as to when we can take a shot and when we can't take a shot in terms of you know legalities and moralities and staying out of trouble and all that kind of stuff. Um, so for that reason, I thought it was a, that was a tremendous premium feature that they, that they offered in this class. Now that's in addition to other things about the, this that I thought were really interesting. I wanted to comment that, and I think I made a couple of comments during the day that like, wow, you guys don't cheap out, do you? And what I meant by that was a lot of times you go to a class from a small company like this and they'll put up one target at the beginning of the day, and that's it. And you will tape that sucker up until it's all tape and there's practically no target left, and you can't even see what you're hitting or what you're not hitting anymore. It was not the case here. Targets were changed regularly. We used uh, Viking tactical targets, which on the front have kind of an interesting kind of an anatomical layout so that when you're standing back at a distance, you can't really see much behind but, but a silhouette. But then when you go to check your shots, you can see, oh, there's a thin outline of the internal organs and musculature and skeleton and everything like that. So you can say, oh, that was a hit to the spine. That was a hit to the, to the heart. Oh, there was a lung. Oh, that one was kind of a, geez, I would have thought that would do more damage, but it really didn't hit anything. Very interesting way to train, very interesting way to look at what your hits might actually do. You flip that target around and then there are abstract targets, geometric shapes and numbers and things like that that you can use for either challenge and identifying you know, your shots, you know, shoot the six. Eh, you got to look and see what the six is. Or for exercises to like, you know, try to keep them all in a line this way or try to keep them all in a line this way uh, for the purposes of uh, diagnosing what problems you might have to work on in, uh, in your sight alignment and things like that, which all three instructors were very happy to work with people on um, getting those things right. Uh, a one-day class packing an awful lot into one day and a tremendous value for that reason and the other reasons that I noted in terms of, you know, not cheaping out and using, uh, using decent targets. Defensive Pistol 101 from NorCal MedTech. I think it's a great value for someone who is maybe not brand new to uh, firearms and pistols, but someone who's got a little bit of knowledge and wants to take that knowledge forward quickly and learn what he ought to be practicing and what he ought to be training and the kinds of skills that he might want to have to uh, learn so that he can employ it to defend his life or the life of those in his care. That's zombie tactics for today. As always, aim for the head, keep your powder dry. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.